In this video I'm going to see what fits in the boot, I'm going to tell you what comes with the car and I'm going to try and run myself over. Here it is then, the brand new Hyundai Ioniq 5. It's looking a bit messy now. It was all nice and sparkly when I picked it up, but one rainstorm and now it's covered in muck. So here's the boot. Open sesame. I think that's quite cool. If you're walking along with loads of heavy shopping and you don't want to be fishing around for the button, that's what you can do. So it'll do that after three seconds. It'll beep at you and then you'll know it's going to open. Okay, so let's look at the boot. Let's see what it comes with. Uh, let's have a look in here. This is the granny cable, also known as just the three pin plug. I'm not going to unwrap it because I don't need it yet, but uh, there we go. So you would use this generally if you're, well, if you're at home and you're waiting for a charge point to be fitted, then you might use this. Or if you go to a friend's house, then it's useful. Um, I mean, it's, it's actually a really useful thing to have and not all cars uh, seem to come with them these days. But there you go. Just don't rely on it because um, we, it, the car does draw a lot draw the high current and it's not really a lot of plugs can't handle it so just be careful okay this one this little box of tricks is the coolest a vehicle to load it's called and this means that you can plug stuff into it for camping and things or even if like what happened to us we had a power cut it means that you can plug stuff into your car it's a fantastic little thing and it's um, it was standard in this project 45 edition of the Ionic 5 but uh, you can option this as well and I forget how much it is but um, you'll probably find it's worth it now in this little bag here there's a net It's not massive, it doesn't really fill the space, does it? But it's big enough, big enough to put your vehicle to load thingy in there. It's nice, it's nice they provide it, right? And here, of course, you've got the normal Type 2 connector. And mine's a bit dirty because I have had to use it. And it's quite a chunky one. This is 11 kilowatt charging, this car supports. Okay, let's have a look under the mat. Uh, this wasn't standard. I did have to pay extra for this. Okay, so let's have a look what's under here. You don't have masses of space. I'm not sure what's under this here, actually. What is that? That's the subwoofer. Okay, so there's a subwoofer under there. Here, stuck. <laughs> stuck with Velcro. You've got the tire mobility kit. Uh, the tow hook. This is, um, this is kind of like your emergency thing if you're tired if you get a puncture then you can use this uh, generally it's not a good idea to use these things as far as I'm, I'm that's what I've been told anyway it's I think once you use it once it knackers the tire and you can't get it repaired so it's better just to call out the call out the AA or whoever you use so let's put that there um, but there is certainly a little bit of extra space down here if you did want to remove it um, it's you know quite a nice little nice little nook at the back there for sort of soft stuff you know here there's a 12 volt socket so that's good if you're using a little portable vacuum thing in the back this little thing here if your if your charging port doesn't open for some reason maybe if the 12 volt battery is dead and it's not opening then that's where your emergency open thing is so you just turn that and pull it out and then that should open the charge port Okay, I've got the trusty tape measure, so let's have a little measure up. 
you've got, well, first it's, it's worth saying there's hardly any lip here. It's pretty flat. Obviously you can lift this up and you get a little bit more space underneath, but it's a really good entry point. And you've got 98 centimeters of length and hundred and about 104 going across from this wheel arch to this wheel arch and then up to the parcel shelf is 36 centimeters and then all the way up to the top about 72 and a half or something. Let's say 72. Now I'll put the, the seats down and we'll see how much it is going to the front. And I'm also going to remove the parcel shelf here. So my seat is set to my driving position. I'm about five foot 10, five foot 11. I always say five foot 10, five foot 11 because frankly, I don't know what I am, but somewhere in between there. And you've got 185 centimeters of length. And it's also pretty flat, to be honest. I mean, that's, that's not too bad at all. Uh, you'd easily fit quite a lot in this car. It's actually pretty big with the seats down. I think there's more than enough space in here for quite a lot of luggage, really, for a family. So I'm going to start throwing in what I've got. And you'll see that it doesn't fill it, but it will give you a good idea how much space there is. So you can see that all should fit in the back. I'm going to put the boot down in a minute, the boot hatch, but that all fits quite nicely in the back, but obviously not with the parcel shelf. And you could of course do that. I mean, there's plenty of space really, isn't there? Look, I can put that up like that, that like that. Um, you know, you could have it like that and just put the seat up on this side. You've really got a lot of space, but not with a parcel shelf. If I try to put the parcel shelf in now, it's just not going to happen. So let's try. Let's try with that in. Also, it's worth saying that there's actually, there's, because the seats, the back seats actually go back, there are two settings on the parcel shelf. This is, this is as far forward as it goes, but you can put it back even more to give the back seats more room to go back. But let's see. So with the parcel shelf in there, Yeah, with the parcel shelf, you simply wouldn't be able to put your luggage upright like that. It has to be like that. And there's not much room really for that to go in without the parcel shelf kind of going up. So it's actually, it is quite shallow really. You see, even a even a carry-on bag, it kind of kind of fits. The, but the parcel shelf still still goes up, so probably better just to remove this, isn't it? If you're taking any luggage. But yeah, and that I think should should fit. That's fine. 
So I was thinking, what would be a good way of demonstrating the boot space and the vehicle to load? And I think I have it. Right, let's see if I could sleep in the back. Here we have a camping bed, just a single one, and a pump. Let's plug it in and blow it up. The bed, not the car. So I'm actually going to cheat a little bit because there is a 12 volt adapter. So I could plug it in there. But I want to show you vehicle to load. So the pump goes in there. I don't think I need any adapters. And the plug goes in the car. So that bit plugs in there. And then we press this. Can you hear the click? Yeah, and that's flashing. That's a good sign. And then we press the button and it goes green, just there. Let me open that up. So that, that doesn't fit in the plug. So there goes that plan. So I'm going to have to get an extension lead. And then we can plug that in. Like that. Okay, so we can put our extension lead in there. And that should close up. Yes, so if you're worried about it being waterproof, that makes it a pretty good solution. There's the bed. Let's see if I can close the boot with me in it. I need keys. Pretty comfortable, you know? Yeah, not bad. I should sleep in here one day, shouldn't I? Ah! <laughs> ah, how do I get out? So not the most gracious of uh, examples, is it? But as you can see, you can quite easily fit a bed in there. So that's worth remembering if you're camping somewhere or you've had an argument with your wife. When the vehicle to load plug is in there, that will flash to show you the amount of battery percentage you've got. So at the moment, this is about 80 percent well, it's just under 80 percent so you can see that that top bit's flashing obviously the lower you get the more those bits are going to flash so um, if i was all down to 20 percent 20 percent is the lowest limit you can do on the vehicle to load it won't let you do any less than that um, if i'm at that kind of limit then that'll start flashing down there i imagine so that's quite easy to see and while you're plugged in it also says transferring v2l on the dash there if you want to use the plug socket that's at the bottom of the seats at the back, then you'll have to unlock it first, actually, with the key. And that involves taking the key and pushing down on this little button here at the top there. Push down on that, and then you pull, and that's the key. So we use that to unlock the plug socket at the back. This is the three-pin socket that's underneath the back seats. And when you first get the car, it's actually locked. So you have to take your key and you just have to lightly turn it. It doesn't go all the way in, it just kind of touches it. And then once you've unlocked it, you can slide that across and you can use your plug socket. I will do another video just about V2L because I love it so much. But it does give you enough power, amazingly, to plug in another car. But I'll save all that for another video. If for whatever reason the, um, the key is not working, the fob is not working, maybe the 12 volt battery is dead or something, then you can push there and you can use this key to unlock it. But it's really fiddly. Here's the key. 
you get two of these pretty obvious really what it does lock unlock hold on that to open the charging port so to open the charging port we can hold down that oh the wrong button <laughs> hold that to open the boot and then you've got these little buttons here backward and forward and this one here and these are quite special really here's the funky bit on this key we can remote control the car first we're going to lock it and then we're going to press down the hold button can you hear that it's doing something the air conditioning's come on and now because the car isn't in frame properly I'm just going to move it back I'm going to press the back button and there we go that'll do so let's go forward It creaks, it creaks a bit, doesn't it? And let's go back. And then to turn it off, hold down the hold button again. And there it is. Imagine if you're parked in a parking space that's far too tight, and it is quite a wide car, so that could happen. That's actually a really good way of getting it out. It's a little bit slow and everything, but of course you don't want to run anyone over, do you? Uh, you may be thinking along those lines, can you run over someone while it's doing this? Should we, should we test that out? This would be the most embarrassing way to die, wouldn't it? YouTuber found crushed by his own car. So let's see if it stops. There we go. Yeah, it won't run me over, but that's good. Embarrassment averted. Okay, let's have a look at what's in the glove compartment. Firstly, you've got the locking wheel nuts, of course. Wouldn't be good if it didn't have that, would it? Um, you've got the manual for navigation. That seems quite a big manual but most of it is different languages. So, for instance, the English bit is only... only that. What's that? 11 pages? So that's the navigation manual. And we've got the proper owner's manual. This is a bit of a beast, this one. That. And that's all English. And it's uh, very good, actually, very good manual. It's the first manual I think I've ever read. So uh, I shouldn't get anything wrong, should I? In theory. I wouldn't put it past myself, but you know, stranger things have happened. Right, okay, and then you get the, this uh, leatherette, whatever this is, um, book with your service record. And what are these? what this is rotary gear shift dial guidance that's interesting I don't know why I don't know why that's needed maybe people are really confused when they get in here about changing gear here so anyway they give you that and a nice certificate with embossed Hyundai logo so that's lovely and a quick reference guide to the vehicle to load power outlet. And what's this, a sticker? No. And that's it in there. Also, these little sections here might be good for storing RFID cards, maybe, if you wanted to. So that's that. So I think that's it for now. If it's not, the frunk. So here it is then, the frunk.
it's quite small on the all-wheel drive version like this one on the rear-wheel drive it's bigger um, but it's in theory it should be big enough to put the charge cable should we have a look now this is the charge cable bag and that is only going to oh will it fit oh it does there we go so yeah so if you really wanted to keep it in here the charging cable then you could maybe the granny cable is better something that you're not going to use very much because arguably this isn't very accessible because you do have to unhook it uh, you have to press the button inside the car to open the uh, open the bonnet but still yeah i mean the granny cable would fit quite nicely i don't know what else you could put in there but um it's good to have it it's actually really nice that the um the bonnet just lifts with these kind of pneumatic things and you don't have to put the hook up and everything and if you're wondering what the 12 volt battery is you can see it here 60 amp hour rc92 cca 550 amp uh sae en there you go there's all the information you need to know then i think that's pretty much the same as the my kia e nero was actually doesn't seem very different um i was hoping that they would have used something a bit better really but no we're still stuck with crappy old 12 volt batteries so that's it for now i hope i haven't forgotten anything i'm going to do so many videos about this car of course that uh, if there is anything that you want me to test then please let me know in the comments and um as ever thank you very much for watching please press the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of other videos and i'll catch you later bye for now I think that would have run me over. No, it's stopping. It doesn't want to run me over. That's a relief. <laughs>